We've been trying a few new concepts lately here on Out Chasing Stars, and today we're going to add one more to the list, a product unboxing and review. We're going to start off with something pretty vital to the operation of your boat, transducers. Specifically, this Airmar DST810 Triducer Multisensor, which is a mouthful, but you'll understand why. My name's David, and I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. First up is the disclaimer. Airmark gave us his transducer so we could test it and share our experiences with you. They don't get to review this video before it's published, so these opinions are 100% our own. But since this is the first time we've ever attempted to do something like this, we do want to say a special thanks to Airmar for the opportunity. Now, let's talk about what is a transducer. At its most basic, a transducer is a device that converts energy from one form into another. Transducers are used in all kinds of industries, but on boats, they're primarily going to be responsible for depth sounding or fish finding. They do that by taking ultrasonic pulses and converting it into NMEA data. That data can then be read as part of our electronic navigation system. What's unique about the DST-810 is that it does much more than just depth finding. It can also read water temperature and speed through the water. So three things, hence triducer and not just transducer. We currently have the older DST-800 model on Starry Horizons, which can do those three things as well, but the 810 has added some intriguing features and upgrades. So the 810 now has a five times faster speed through the water data output, which that means that where our 800 reports speed data one time per second, the 810 reports speed data five times per second. And that should hopefully provide for a bit of a smoother speed through the water data feed, which I will say that on our previous version has been a bit laggier than our speed over ground data, which that's GPS based. Also, the 810 now integrates an attitude sensor to, to detect and calibrate for trim and heel. The healing motion, you know, that's the side to side. It's probably not quite as important for us in a catamaran, but I will be interested, interested to see how it tracks trim when we're surfing down the waves. And because everything has an app these days, there's now an app available on Android and iOS called Cast, which you can connect to via Bluetooth, which is also integrated into the 810. The app has a lot of features, including the ability to calibrate the 810, but I'll talk more about that once I get the chance to actually test everything. I did mention uh, that we have the DST-800 Triducer currently on our boat, but it's worth noting that Airmar kept things very simple for anyone looking to make the upgrade. The 810 shares the exact same design and dimensions with the 800, so you won't have to change through holes or fittings, which is so nice. Other manufacturers of marine equipment should definitely take note. Now, let's get on to the actual unboxing. Here we go. Box. Pretty easy box. And there's what's in the box. Sorry, bad joke, I know. Hopefully someone got it out there. Anyways, now let's go ahead and pull everything out and we'll take a look at it all once we get it laid out here. I think that pretty much covers everything in the box itself. Let's get this out of the way and start with the most important thing, the transducer itself. Now we've got, this is the transducer, as you can see, Airmar. DST-810, so at least I'm talking about the right thing. We've got the paddle wheel here on the bottom. Brand new, moves so nice and easy. I absolutely love that. So this little paddle wheel can work at 45 knots through the water. I don't know about any of you guys, but eh, we've never had Starry Horizons anywhere close to those speeds. So unless you're in a super fast motor yacht, I, I think you'll be fine. Um, 
Yeah. So 45 knots, as I said, that does, this is the part that's now working at five times per second for your speed through the water data. So I will be very interested to see what difference that actually makes. On the other side here, we've got this flat part, and that is where it's gonna actually be reading the um, depth sound and also the water temperature. So that is where the electronic, uh, the ultrasonic pulses are gonna be sent down and reading your depth data. And that works mm, about to a depth of 330 feet. So we draw mm, about four and a half, which 330 is gonna be plenty for our purposes. Now, let's see, we've got an O-ring here, kind of at the top. Got a little cap that screws down into the through hole. And I think that covers pretty well the actual transducer itself. The other part of this, we've got a very long cable here. Now, I am seeing something that surprised me just a little bit. Uh, my understanding is that you should be able to order these with a connector for your system. So we have a Raymarine Electronics. We um, had specified that you know, we'd love to get a connector with the Raymarine CTOG NG, I believe is our uh, backbone. This looks like it's just a regular NMEA 2000 connection. So um, not quite the right one for us, but I can get an adapter cable. We should still be able to use this, uh, but something to keep in mind if you're looking to order one for yourself, uh, you should hopefully be able to actually get the type of connector you need. As I mentioned, this works on the NMEA 2000 network. Uh, so if you only have older instruments with the NMEA uh, previous version, this one's not gonna work for you. I think the 810 or the 800 that we have currently, that would still work. So keep that in mind. Let's move on to, we've got ourselves the blanking plug. This, with a little bit of a funny name, we actually do use quite a bit. Uh, as you can see, I mean, there's just nothing here on the bottom. It's just completely flat, no sensors, nothing. But you get to use this when you're parked in one place for a long time. We use it mostly if we're in a marina and not planning on going anywhere, or when we haul out. Uh, especially important when you haul out because you don't want to accidentally have, say, a straps from a lift getting under the boat, um, crushing the paddle wheel on the, the triducer. So the blanking plug, definitely worth it for those two scenarios especially. We go back and forth if we're anchoring uh, on whether or not, if we're anchoring for a while, if we want to put the blanking plug in, mostly because I do like being able to have instant depth data if, uh, if, we're, if we're worried about we're dragging or the wind shifting and we want to check the new water we're in anchored, uh, it's nice to be able to have that data quickly. And if you have the blanking plug in when you're anchored, you're not going to have that. So something to keep in mind, definitely worth if you're in a marina or hauled out. Otherwise, think about it a little bit. Now, this is going to be the through hole that the A10 comes with. Now, as you can kind of see, I'm going to see if I can get this shown for you. There's a little stopper here, which I think is so cool. Uh, a little, little cool piece of technology. Now the way it works is when you are pulling the triducer or the blanking plug, the water pressure is going to come up and close this little stopper. And that means that while the, well, the water is still going to come into the boat, it doesn't block it completely it's not gonna be a giant flood, which means that you're worried about the boat sinking. And it's never a good feeling when that happens. So uh, that, is, that is quite nice. This is a plastic through hole. I do believe that there are other options which you could order if you want. Uh, the plastic one is what we have and has worked fine for us. Um, for anyone who is wondering, it is ABYC rated. So, I mean, it, it's pretty substantial. We have got, as part of the through hole, we've got the screw cap, and technically, I believe they call this the washer. Um, looks to me kind of like a, a gasket. Probably get away with calling it either thing. Um, but this will be the whole combination, attaching that to the boat, properly sealed and everything, of course. But at least you've got the through hole as part of the kit. You don't have to go source one for yourself. There are a couple O-rings which come with this kit. We've got a yellow one here, and this one is 
what you're going to see. If we look again here in the very top of the triducer, that's very yellow. So it's very nice to have a spare. And then also we've got the black O-ring as well. Don't know why this one gets its own special little packaging and the yellow one's just on its own, but so be it. The black O-ring is going to go here at the bottom of the triducer. Um, also have those here at the bottom of the blanking plug as well. So it's super nice to have a sp spare O-rings because if one of them ever breaks, it's really a pain to try to find the exact replacement for an O-ring when you're just out and about. So having some spares, super helpful, super useful. Last little packet we've got here. This is your silicon dielectric compound and a little safety wire. So what you're going to be using this for is you put a little bit of the silicone on the O-rings as you clamp those down to make sure you get a nice good connection. The safety wire, let's see if I can show this and explain it. There are a few little gaps here on the cap for the through hole and then also here on the blanking plug cap as well as the triducer. There's little holes here on the sides. Uh, that the safety wire is intended to seize the entire thing down so you don't actually have or accidentally have the caps kind of unscrewing themselves and water ingress which you never ever want to have Let's see i think we've got one last thing and that looks like owner's guide and instructions so everything has got to have owner's guide and instructions these days there is i believe pdf online versions if you would prefer to download those so you can store them electronically rather than have to keep more paper on your boat but this is going to have all the information which you need to actually install the through hole and uh, hopefully set things up that's going to be part of what i'm going to read before we actually do the testing read the manual always helps so i think that covers just about everything that comes in the kit so what we're going to do now is i'm going to go down below and actually we'll install this thing so if you want to know how to do that, we actually have a video put on by Amy, one of our very first how-to videos. I'll link to that up here in the corner. And it shows how to pull this out. Well, I think she actually cleaned the triducer in that video, but it'll give you an idea of kind of the process that's necessary. So I'm gonna go down, get that done, and then we'll come back, finish up this video once I've had a chance to actually test everything. All right, we've got the same shirt, a new day, I promise that. And we've completed enough testing, including a thousand mile passage from Virginia to the Bahamas, that I'm feeling qualified to wrap up and give some final thoughts on the DST-810. To start off, I did confirm that Airmar does indeed make equipment-specific connections for the 810. We just had a slight mix-up with the shipping of the unit they initially sent to us. I did have the cables needed to convert the NMEA-2000 to our Raymarine SeaTalk NG connection, so we could do a few initial tests. Unfortunately, those tests did discover an issue. We were getting depth info and water temperature, but no speed through the water. Subsequently, we learned that a few early production run models were slightly out of spec. They fit in the through hole, but they were compressed enough that the paddle wheel couldn't spin, so we didn't get any speed data. After that discovery, Airmar sent us a newer model, this time with a Raymarine connection, and it's worked perfectly. One quick note for you, when you're trying to check everything for the first time, make sure your navigation instruments are on. That may be kind of a, well, duh statement, but that's how the 810 gets power, and it took me longer than I'd like to realize that. There are a couple other things I want to follow up on from the first part of this review. Uh, the kit that we received, it had a plastic through hole. Airmar recommends using the plastic housing only for fiberglass or metal hold boats. A wood boat could experience some swelling of the wood, and that can break the plastic. So Airmar does offer bronze or stainless steel housing as other options. I also forgot to mention that the 810 can have anti-fouling applied to it. Airmar has a diagram showing which surfaces can be covered and you should make sure to only use water-based anti-foul. The recommendation is to recoat every six months, but I'd say you can reapply as needed given how easy it is to remove the transducer and replace it with the blanking plug. Just make sure you don't build up enough coats that the little paddle wheel can't spin freely. Now, let's talk about the Airmar Cast app, which is where the real power of the 810 comes into play. 
It's available on either iOS or Android, and you use the app to connect to the transducer via Bluetooth. The signal is decently strong. I could pick it up from our starboard transom, which is the opposite corner from where the transducer is installed, but the signal wasn't strong enough to actually connect. It seems to work best within about 15 feet or a bit over 4.5 meters. To connect to the 810, make sure Bluetooth is active on your phone, but go directly into the Cast app. There's no need to perform the standard pairing through your phone's Bluetooth settings. If the 810 has power and you're within range, you'll see your device. So the first time you connect, it's going to ask you for the last three digits of your device's serial number. Also, it wants to get your location, which you should allow it because that will help do some calibration via GPS and stuff later. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow it to use while we're using the app. And we're gonna go ahead and put in our serial number, at least the last three numbers of it. Hit the check mark to hit OK. And now we can come into the initial customizing of the device. You have this opportunity to provide kind of a custom, they're calling it a friendly name. Uh, this would help, you know, if you're in a crowded marina or anchorage and there's other people with the same 810, it's nice to be able to look and see uh, which one is specifically yours. So we're going to go ahead, give this friendly name. We're on Starry Horizons. Starry Horizons seems like a decent friendly name. So Starry Horizons. And you should hopefully have picked up on this by now. We are a sailboat. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and hit the check plus mark or check mark to accept everything. One quick note, as you are getting the device set up, um, you'll only need to input the serial number the first time you set up the app, but if you wanna to connect to the 810 from multiple different devices, whether that's multiple phones or an iPad, you'll need to input those three digits in the app on each device. So now that we're connected, we come to the data device home screen. You've got some nifty little graphics here to show our speed, depth below the transducer, temperature, trim, and heel. But if you're strictly a numbers person, you can just tap the screen to change the view to only text. Now, there are a few settings I'd recommend everyone change as soon as they start up the app. The first will be to customize the name of your device. So if you haven't done that already, I'm gonna show you where you can come in and do that well, in the future as well, if you feel like changing it. All the way at the top, there is kind of the swiping menu. And I just went all, all the way to the right. I'm going back to the left. Here's the device data again. All the way to the right, information tab. So you can click customize and you again come back to that friendly name, sailboat, everything you can customize again. Now, note, this is only stored locally, the name. Uh, within the app and not on the actual 810 itself. So if you are using multiple phones or devices to connect to your 810, each one can have their own unique name. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the check mark, come back out of that. Uh, the next thing we want to adjust is the units being used. We're gonna come back to the device data screen. I like the graphics, let's go ahead and put that back on there. But you'll notice that the depth below the transducer right now is in meters and our temperature is in Celsius fine for most of the world, but we'll go ahead and show you guys how to adjust things just in case you want. In the upper right hand screen of the upper right hand corner of the screen, there is a gear icon. Click that and you get your unit settings. There's a lot of different choices, so select the ones that you're most comfortable with. I'm going to go ahead and change our depth from meters to feet and our temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, there's no like check mark to accept this one, so just tap back to the screen and that should save your settings. Now, those are some of the basic options within the app, but its real power is where it allows you to program offsets and fine tune this calibration specific to your boat. There are a lot of options, and I'm not going to take the time to cover all of them, but I do want to give a quick overview of how to program offsets, as that kind of gives you an idea of how the app thinks. To do that, we're gonna need to swipe back through our menu options. Third menu is offsets. Uh, here we can program the offsets for depth, temperature, trim, and heel. Now, currently we can see the values that the 810 is reading. You might notice something a little bit odd. 
Uh, the depth is showing 4.7 feet and the temperature is 26.1 degrees Fahrenheit. We're in the Bahamas right now. It is not freezing, so that's a little cold for the water. This does appear to be a bug. Uh, the depth and temperature, even though we've changed the unit settings to feet and Fahrenheit, are st still reading in meters and Celsius on this page. We have uh, informed Airmar of this. Hopefully, they're going to be coming out with a fix on the app at some point. But for the meantime, just note that you're going to have to do a little converting. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, program an offset. We're going to click the down arrow on the category we want. So depth, you can see the raw value is what the 810 is currently reading. And the underlined offset value, that's what we're going to adjust. So you enter a negative number to subtract from the raw value or a positive number to add to it. So we're going to continue with depth as our example. If I wanted to see depth measurements from the water line down to the seafloor, I need to add a positive number to adjust for the distance between the transducer and how far that's located below the water line. In our case, that's about one foot or 0.3 meters. I'm going to come back to my offsets, come back here. So since even though it's showing in feet, I need to put this in meters, I'm going to add 0.3, hit the check mark to have it accept it. Now if we go back to our device data gauge display, you will notice the depth below has changed slightly. It now says depth below surface and has increased by about that one foot to the original measurement. So that's working properly. Also, you can see the temperature is reading Fahrenheit here on the device data page. So let's go ahead and go back to offsets. And now, as I mentioned, we're here in the Bahamas. So it's super shallow and keeping track of the depth below our mini keels without having to do the constant subtraction may be of higher concern at the moment. So to program the offset for this, we're going to go back in and we're going to input a negative number this time in order to get the value to be all the way down to the bottom of our mini keels. I'm going to go ahead, come on in, and we'll put an offset of about 2.6 feet or 0.8 meters, which would give us a little extra cushion below our mini keels. We're going to go ahead and input the number first. So I'm going to go ahead and do the 0.8, and we're then going to hit the plus minus button to make it the negative number hit the check mark to accept again. And now we're gonna go back to our gauge display and you can see the text has changed a little bit. It is now depth below keel. And I'm moving this a little bit far away from the transducer so it's having to think a little bit, but you can see depth below keel is now about 12.8 feet, which again, that works pretty well for us in the Bahamas, but one thing that you'll need to think about as you choose which way to program your transducer is that if you choose to enter the negative number and have the measurements below your keel, you'll need to add back the distance between the mini keel and the water line when you calculate how much scope you're letting out for your anchor chain. Because if you calculate scope only from the bottom of your keels to the seafloor, that could leave you with far too little chain out, especially if you have a deep keel. Okay. Hopefully, that gives you a good overview of the initial setup needed for the Cast app. I definitely recommend checking out the Cast app guide for further information, as there's a lot more customization that can be done. This guide did not come in the box, so I'll leave a link to where you can find it down in the description below. Now, let's take a look at how everything worked while we were sailing from Virginia down to the Bahamas. Please ignore the mess behind me. <laughs> That's the storage cabin while we're on This passage, is my right? massive pantry. Yeah. All right, so I'm down here in the forward cabin, un right above where the transducer is so that I can connect to it via Bluetooth. I can see now the trim and heel of the boat, which is neat, it's got this really cool icon that shows the boat tilting, which is fun. And then all the other transducer information, which is the speed through the water, the depth, through, uh, the depth below the transduce transducer, and the temperature. Okay. So while that works, I think it's up at the helm too, yeah? Yes, the okay. information is all available up at the helm, so you don't really need to have a big range on the Bluetooth yeah. because the app is just, you know, giving you info. Yeah, well, I think uh, we'll cover a little bit more about the app and setting up all the transducer stuff through it, maybe when we're not on passage and everything's moving so much. Yes, yeah. that would be good. All right, I'm going to go and take a look at the, the information we get at the helm. Okay.
while we're at Passage, it's fun to kind of take a look at how the Air Mars uh, working, like, you know, under sea conditions. And I gotta say, like, it is definitely noticeable how much faster the speed through the water updates. Like, before it was definitely had a lag, and now it really seems to update very, very quickly, uh, probably at the same rate as our GPS, it looks like. Uh, the other fascinating thing is, you know, now we can see our roll and our pitch information, even up here at the chart plotter. So that's really cool to be able to see. Uh, and, you know, some of these big waves, it's a little disconcerting to see the boat, like, <laughs> just how far that roll goes. Uh, you know, we have faith, Starry Horizons will always come back for us, so, so that part's nice. But uh, yeah, like definitely, definitely a noticeable difference while we're out here at sea. Overall, I've been very pleased with how the new DST-810 Triducer has been working for us. As I mentioned while we were filming on Passage, the five times faster output in speed through the water data is a noticeable upgrade over our old DST-800. Also, the additional information on trim and heel is a very nice feature. I would find myself just watching those numbers while we were at sea. I do think the heel information especially would be more helpful on a monohull. If you can see that you're healing too far, that might be a clue that you're over canvassed and need to put in a reef. Catamarans, a bit more reef by numbers. Now we didn't talk too much about the water temperature or the depth readings while we were on passage, but they've also been working great. Now, Granted, I've been experiencing anxiety every time I look at the shallow depths here in the Bahamas, but at least I know we have an accurately calibrated depth sounding, so I'm not wondering if the two feet under our mini keels is actually closer to six inches. I'd also like to reiterate just how important I think it is that Airmar managed to package all these upgrades into the same form factor. Not having to replace a through hole makes this a very easy upgrade. That should just about cover everything. So I really hope y'all enjoyed this first attempt at a product unboxing and review. Let me know down in the comments what y'all thought and how we can make this better, or if there's other boat equipment you'd like to see us make similar videos for. Now, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to see more videos like this one. You can click down here to do so. You can also watch more of our videos by clicking up here. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys another day in another bay. Bye, y'all.